like you to pause wherever you're at right now, and we're going to go over this. We're, we are going to turn this into a different type of problem, but let's just go over the portion that I asked you to do right now, which is to write a similarity statement. So I want you to look. Remember, when we do this, we have to match A up with the right letter in the other triangle. So when I look at this triangle, I notice that A is across from 5. Is 5 the biggest or the smallest or the medium-sized sign? It's the smallest. So note that A is across from 5. And since 5 is the smallest, when we pick its corresponding letter in the second triangle, we want to look for the smallest side over here, which is what? Smallest side is 16, and that's across from Z. So we want Z to come first here because A was across from the smallest side. So we want it to be consistent so that Z is also across from the smallest side. And then I would look at what's next, because whatever B is, it's got to match up with something in this other triangle. It looks like it's either X or Y. So look at B and look at what's across from it. It's 7. Is 7 the biggest, the smallest, or the medium? It's the biggest. What's biggest over here? 22.4. We go across from 22.4 and we find X. So X needs to match up with B. And then by process of elimination, we must have, well, we've only got one more. It's got to be Y, correct? Yeah. So let's double check and just make sure it does match. Y is across from the medium side here. And C was across from the medium side here as well. So we got to look at what it's across from, whether it's across from the biggest, the smallest, or medium. There are other ways to do this, um, but that's, that's the one that my students usually have the most success with, looking at the biggest, smallest, medium, and X. Okay. Let's go ahead and write some ratios for these. Now that we know that A matches up with Z, that means that the 5 and the 16 match up. So let's write a ratio. Do you guys want to do 5 over 16 or 16 over 5? 5 over 16. Who's got a calculator with them? What is 5 over 16? Give me a decimal. You can wait. Do you guys have calculators with you? Can you get them out of your bags, please? You're going to need them today. Five over 16. Give me a decimal. 0 0.3125. All right. Make sure you're writing this down. Um, and then we had B which was across from seven. So seven and 22.4 must go together. Let's do seven over 22.4. Can someone check that in your calculator and tell me what you're getting as a decimal? I'm hoping it's the same thing. Yeah. It is? Okay, good. 0 0.3125. And finally, uh, C was across from 6.5. We said that matched up with 20.5. So 6.5 over 20.5 comes out to be what? 20.8, thank you. 6.5 divided by 20.8. Can someone please check? Is it the same? 0.3125. Fingers crossed. Yes, okay. What have we just shown about these two triangles? The sides are not similar. The triangles are similar. The sides are in, starts with a P, in proportion. Good. We've just shown that the sides are in proportion. All right, folks, we are going to do something new today, and I really need your attention for this. Let's go ahead. I'm going to ask you down below this to redraw triangle ABC. <coughs> I just want to get a clean version of it because I've drawn lines all over my paper here. And when we draw the second triangle, let's not draw it the way that I did it originally. Let's draw it so everything matches up, right? 
So we've already figured out that A, B, C matches up with Z, X, Y. So let's put the Z in the same place as the A. B was the same as X. Let's put X up the, at the top so that it matches up with the B. And let's put Y so that it matches up with the C. Let's kind of change this triangle so that it matches up. And then let's make sure we get the numbers in the right places too. So based off of what we had up here, so Y was across from the 20.8. X was across from the 22.4, and Z was across from the 16. And I'm going to ask you to add a couple more things to our picture. Could you also add? Map A and Z, an arc with a single tick in it. And at B and X, an arc with a double tick. And at C and Y, an arc with a triple tick. Bless you. We are going to do our first proof today, guys. We're going to do it with this problem, OK? Now, proof is something that's really important in geometry. And I'll tell you, when I've taught geometry in previous years out of different books, my students really struggle with proof. But I think this book does it a different way that, that, that my students find it a lot easier to pick up, OK? So, but it's going to be weird because you've probably never done a problem like this before. So I want us to write down what the problem is. The problem is going to be prove that Triangle A, B, C is similar to triangle Z, X, Y. We're going to do this using what's called a flow chart proof. Are you guys ready? It's going to be weird, so I need your attention. All right, here we go. Um, I've got three sides, and I've got to get those three sides and show that they're in proportion. So I'm going to do one of them here. I'm going to go with the 6.5 and the 20.8. Now, 6.5, that's AB. And 20.8, that's uh, ZX. So we've done AB over ZX equals. And then write down what the numbers are for them. And then write down what it equals, which we already found out was 0 0.3125. We're going to put a bubble around that. Oh, welcome. That works right there. All right, now, does this look really hard? Do you see where I got all these things from? I named the two sides that were matching the AB and the ZX. Hi. Thank you. Okay, gotcha. There's a note on there. Do you know what that means and where you're supposed to go? Yes. Okay. Go All right, so we named the two sides that match the AB and the ZX. We put the lengths in there and then we put it was equal, what it was equal to. I'm gonna do another bubble that's gonna look a lot like this. Okay. Um, why don't we go with the AC? I'm gonna put AC on the top. Anybody want to guess what I'm going to put on the bottom of AC? ZY, ZY yeah, because that matches, right? That's the bottom of the triangle, ZY. In my next fraction, I'm just going to put the numbers for AC and ZY. What's the number for AC? Seven. We'll put that up top. And what's the number for ZY? 22.4. 
And when we divided those a moment ago with our calculator, we got 0 0.3125. Second bubble's complete. Do you think you can do my third bubble for me? Give it a shot. Follow the same pattern. Uh, yeah, I can give you some paper. Do you have a writing utensil? Uh, you guys got it done? What's the sign I'm missing? Did you go BC or CB? BC. Did anybody do CB? Okay, I'll be that guy then. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You can name something either way, so it doesn't really matter. Ah, we really don't have to. It's okay. If that bothers you, it's okay. Don't worry. BC is the same as CB. And then XY or YX, doesn't matter. It's the same side. I can tell some of you don't like that. That's okay. If you want everything to match and be nice and order in these fractions, that's okay. When we write the fractions, it really doesn't matter because we're just naming the side. And BC is the same length as CB is. It's the same thing. All right, and then did you have five and 16? And then it was also equal to 0 0.3125. Okay, so that's just, that's good. So what we've done right now is we've shown that the three sides are in proportion. Now I need three more bubbles. I'm going to show you what the first bubble, first or the fourth bubble is, and I bet you'll be able to figure out what the fifth and sixth are. Okay, it has to do with the angles. Good. So remember to prove two things similar, we need all of the sides to be in proportion, which we've got, and then we need to show that all the angles match also. So my my next bubble is going to be angle A is congruent to angle Z. And that's it for that bubble. It's a small bubble. Angle A is congruent to angle Z because those are matching angles and we've already marked that they're congruent. So can you guys please write me two more bubbles for the other two angle sets? I ran out of room. Usually, these, usually we have all the bubbles kind of lined up in a row at the top, <laughs> but I ran out of room, so I had to kind of screw it around. Somebody want to be brave and volunteer another bubble for the angles? What'd you get for, your, for one of your other ones? Angle B and congruent to angle X. Those match. Awesome. And the last one, what'd you have, Taylor? Angle C is congruent to angle Y. Okay, well, all right, you ready? This is the last thing. So this is all of our evidence. And each of these evidence, pieces of evidence come together to create our final conclusion. And our final conclusion is this. So over here, this is usually at the bottom, but I'm kind of putting it in the center this time. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle CXY. That goes in a bubble. And we need arrows going from all of our evidence bubbles into our conclusion bubble. Those arrows have to have an arrow head on them. They're not just lines that we're drawing between them. We need to show an arrow because we need to show those things are pieces of evidence that support that final conclusion. Okay. You got that done? Congratulations, you have just completed your first proof in geometry. 
show me where you're feeling on your thumb meter right now for this. I'm expecting most of us to be kind of in this area here. Some of you are feeling really good. Okay. Some of you are super confident. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, let's see. I would like you to try one on your own. Oop, I'm missing some information. Excuse me. Let me finish drawing this. So you're going to want to draw your picture. And I'm going to get us started on our first bubble. Let's go ahead and draw the picture. I'm going to get us started on our first bubble, and then I'm going to have you guys take it away from there. But let me get us started so we're kind of all being consistent about how we're writing the side bubbles. So as you're sketching this, I want you to start thinking about predicting what your final answer is going to look like. How many bubbles do you think we're going to have in this proof? Six or seven? So we need our conclusion bubble and then three for the sides and three for the angles. So seven altogether. So we're going to have seven bubbles, just like we had in the last one. Three of them are going to be side bubbles. Those ones are kind of bigger because we have to name the sides and then put the lengths of the sides and then come up with a decimal answer. The angle bubbles are pretty simple. This time I did, you guys like that I lined the triangles up so that they kind of match each other from the beginning. Okay, we'll kind of keep it simple here since we're learning something new. We're trying to prove that they're similar to one another, yeah. So which side do we want to start with? The left, or right, or the bottom? The left, you want to go FH, or do you want to go GE on the top? Bigger one or smaller one on the top? You want to do smaller one? Bigger one? Let's put bigger one. We did smaller one on the top last time. Let's do, let's do bigger on the top. Oops. Sorry, I need the names. I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so the bigger one is called GE. And this bigger one, or this smaller one is called FH that it matches. And that's uh, 15 and six. And 15 divided by six for someone with a calculator, that would be the same as five over two, wouldn't it? 2.5? 2.5. Uh, there's one bubble. I would like you to see if you can get the other six. Give it a shot here. And then I kind of draw my format, come back in and have you guys help me finish it up here. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, so I would dock you points if you were missing the arrowheads. We're going to get into problems where there's there's multiple steps. So these we will uh, just to show you where we're going with this. We might have this going into here and then this might become evidence for something else further down the page. And so we've got to have the arrowhead so we can see like how everything flows into the final statement. Does that make sense? That's why they call it a flow chart proof. Right now, everything's everything's flowing into the same place, but we're going to see some more complex proofs where there's like multiple levels of it. Um, folks, I'm super impressed though. We are doing great. Let me uh, catch up with you here. I'm going to go HS for my second bubble. And oh, we want the big one on top though. See how I almost messed that up? They need to be consistent just like we've been practicing. So it looks like I want EO on the top and HS on the bottom, which is 20 and eight, which does come out to 2.5. And again, if you had OE instead of EO, you realize that's the same thing, right? It's all right. Oh. 
Oh, you want to put them in al alphabetic order? And that's a smart habit to get into. It's smart to always put things in alphabetic order, but technically they don't have to be. So. Well, then, then keep them organized, whatever is going to work for you. And I apologize if I make your brain go a little nuts when I don't put them in alphabetic order. All right, and then we need our angles. Let's see, I got H and E are the same angle. F and G, S and O. And as I was walking around, I think every single person in here had a valid proof for this. The only thing I'm missing right now are my arrows. And yes, those arrowheads are important, but that's it. All right. You guys are doing fantastic. Okay, now. Now that we've learned this, I have some wonderful news for you. That right there, those two proofs that we just did are going to be the most complex proofs that we're going to do for a little while. Because there are shortcuts to this. So I made you do it the long way first because I want to make sure we understand all the moving pieces. But I am about to tell you right now, the more we're dealing with two triangles, there are some shortcuts for proving them similar. And I'm going to show you these two shortcuts, okay? So basically, we're going to end up doing the same thing, but instead of having six bubbles that lead into our final one, most of the time, we only need two or three. Isn't that great news? So if you can do it like this, that's great, because that's way harder than what you're going to need to do moving forward. All right, so let me teach you a couple shortcuts. You're going to love these. All right, so these are triangle similarity shortcuts. And there were a bunch of these. We're just going to stick with two of them for today. Okay, we'll come back and we'll add a couple more on to them later on. All right, the first one is called angle. Mm -hmm. Angle, angle, we call it AA. And this says that if you have two triangles, as long as you've got two pairs of angles that are congruent, then automatically the two triangles are similar. Now, I want to go back up here and look at this proof that we just did here. And I want to point out to you that we could have accomplished this whole thing with just that. That would have been enough right there. All I need is two pair of angles. That's it. Now this is only for triangles, right? So you get to quadrilaterals or something that has five or six sides. This doesn't work, but we only need two of the angles. So we could have gotten away with just those or just those. Okay. So let's draw a picture of this. I'm going to draw just a, a generic triangle here. Let's call it, what do you want to call this triangle? Give me three letters. A, C, G. And let's do another one right next to it. What do you want to call the second one? K, Q, F. And let's mark this angle congruent to this angle. And let's get a little tricksy on this. Let's go to this angle congruent to not the top one, but this one right here. Turns out that right there is enough information for me to know that those two triangles are similar. I don't need to know anything about their sides whatsoever. I don't even need the third angle to know that they're similar. All I need are those two angles. So, so that's part of the, yeah, that's the reason why, because if these, so Anthony pointed out, if these two angles are the same as these two, then doesn't this kind of have to be the same anyways? Because yeah. the three angles are related to each other. They all add up to 180 in both cases, right? So really you are, if you have two, you are getting three. You're just getting that third one for free. It's three for the price of two. Turns out we don't need any of the sides though. 
All right, my challenge to you is can you rate me a similarity statement? I'm going to start with ACG here. Now, be careful. It's not KQF. Match them up in the right order. So look at this, look at the markings to figure out what A is going to match up with. A's got a single tick, so we want to go K first here. What needs to come second, though? So C had the double tick. C came second here. And F is the one that's also got the double tick. So F and then Q isn't marked. We go with that would match up with Q. All right, we feeling okay so far? All right, and if I ask you to make a proof for that, it would be a really short proof. And we're going to do some proofs about these in just a second, but let me show you the second shortcut we're going to focus on today. This is called side angle side. Anybody want to guess how we abbreviate that? SAS, the sassy one. So in this one, we need two sets of sides in one angle. Two sets of sides in one angle. But there's something kind of tricky about this one. Okay, and I'm gonna go back up to our last proof to show you what it is. So I'll let you guys get that copy down and then let me show you what's tricky about this one. All right. So let's say I went with, let's say I got rid of this. So I only need two of these and I need one more of these. But it's got to be the right one. So I'm going to tell you, let me see if I can figure out what the right one is. This is the 20 and the 8. 20 and the 8 are both the bottom. 25 and 10. So I'm looking at the 20 and the 25. 20 and the 25, and I need the angle that's touching both of those, which is O and S. So those three would work. Now, if I went with this, no, that's not correct. That's not side angle side. That's angle side side. ASS. We don't use ASS, right? It's a bad word. No, not because it's bad, because it doesn't work. Okay, let me show you another one. If I if I went with the first two here, okay, so let's get rid of this. Um, G E and E O. So look at G E and E O in the picture. And tell me what's the angle that's sandwiched in between G E and E O? What's the angle that's in between those two sides? Angle E is between them. The 15 and the 20, right? Look at the 15 and the 20. See how the E is in between them? It's touching both of them. So we want to keep the E. So that would work. That would be SAS right there. Okay, so when you do this, when you do side angle side, it only works if the angle is touching both sides. So I'm going to draw my, I like to draw myself a couple little arrows when I introduce this and make a note, star, angle, must touch both sides. So I'm going to go back to our original triangle we did a second ago, ACG. The KQF. So I don't need I don't need lengths on all of the sides. I only need lengths on two of the sides in each triangle. Would you agree that those two sides are in proportion? If I made fractions out of both of those, I'm going to get the same thing for both fractions. It's either going to be two over one or one over two for each of them, right? 
What's the angle that I would need to mark though in order to be SAS and not ASS? K and A. It's got to be the angle that's in between the two sides, the angle that's touching those two sides. Okay, we do not use angle side side. Yeah, it's another word for a, for a, for a donkey, so it's, it doesn't have to be a bad word, but the main reason we don't use it is because it doesn't work. And I'll show you why it doesn't work, because when we get to congruence, we'll get into congruent shapes later on. So those are our two for now. We are going to add some more on later. Okay, so you will learn some more ways to prove the two triangles are similar without having to do all six. So the beautiful thing is the next proof we're going to have is you're going to either have two bubbles leading into a final conclusion, or it's going to have three bubbles leading into a final conclusion. We do not need all six anymore. Now, when it comes to the S bubbles, the S bubbles are going to look like these. You're going to, they're going to be bigger. You're going to have to name the sides, make a fraction, and tell me what the fraction is equal to. Angle bubbles will look similar to these. So um, you guys ready to do an actual proof now? Don't worry. Okay. Um, I'll draw it for you. This is out of the book. But if you don't have a book in front of you, that's right. I got you covered. And we got time to finish this. You guys are doing great. I'm super happy. This can sometimes be a little bit of a challenging lesson for my students. And I feel like you guys are picking it up really quickly. Oops, spoiler alert, don't look. Uh, I was thinking ahead, I think. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. For those who missed it, I did write a number in here, but I didn't mean to write it in here because it's not written in the book. It's written in my notes right next to it, but it's not in the book. Now, look at this as it is right now. Can we use angle angle? I see one pair of angles that matches, 32 and 32, but these don't match. Oh, bummer. But maybe we could figure out what this one is, and maybe that would match, right? Can somebody figure out what this one would be? Is it 52? If I were trying to figure it out, I'd grab my calculator, I'd go 180 minus 32 minus 96. Basically 180 and subtract those off and see what I have left over. And what do we get? Is it 52? Can someone double check in the calculator for me? 52? Yes? Okay, confirm. It's 52. So can we use angle angle for this? Yeah. Yes, indeed. Awesome. So that means we should be able to do two bubbles. Let's say two angles are congruent to each other in each one. So I'm just going to kind of get my format set up here, and then I'm going to ask you guys to kind of fill in the blanks. Typically, when we test you the first time on proofs, the proof the proofs will be fill in the blanks with you. So I'll set up the bubbles for you, and you're just going to have to get the details in the right spots in the, in the proofs. So those are the only two pieces of evidence that we need, and then we need a final conclusion bubble for the two triangles. All right, see what you can do there. Yep. Uh, 
I'm not 100% sure about that because I worked it out myself, but we'll talk about it in a second. All right, in your proof, did you match angle J up with angle X? And maybe you had X is congruent to J. That's fine if you did. It's the same thing. And then you matched up with other two angles. O and K. O and K. Maybe some of you did KO instead of OK, but that's OK. <laughs> and now we might all end up writing different uh, similarity statements but they should match up in the same way. So I'm going to go, what do I want to do? I'm going to go uh, jump, J-O-P. And I just need to make sure that J matches up with whatever goes first here. And I can already see up here that J and X are going to match up. In fact, yeah, they both have 32. So I finished them first here. And I went O next, and O matches up with K. So K needs to go here. I want P last. P was the one that was not 52 or 32. So that would match up with B. So you can have these in any order you want, as long as J is matching up with X, O is matching up with K, P is matching up with B. How many people had a good proof for that one? How many people are feeling like they were successful on that? All right, that's awesome. Folks, that is really great. Let's do one more. Yep, one more. Let's do it. Let's do one more. Yeah. That was 51A. We're going to do 51B. This will be our last one. And again, I'm, uh, if you don't have a book in front of you, that's all right. I'm going to cover. Ooh, a big yawn. Sorry, I'm boring you. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> Let's see you. We have a suggestion that we may have a sassy situation here. I don't think I've got enough information to do angle angle, though, do I? And to do angle angle, you need two sets of angles. I have two angles, but that's only one set of angles. So I don't have enough. If I had, like, if these angles are also marked, then I could do angle angle, and I would have some options. But in this case, angle angle is off the table. And the only other shortcut we know is SAS. So whenever you see two angles that are marked with an arc like that, it means they're the same. Yeah. Or if I did, yeah, sometimes they put ticks in them. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes instead of uh, doing an arc with double ticks, they'll do double arcs. Those would be the same also. So yeah, what I'm trying to communicate to you is that F and U are congruent angles. So we're going to need three evidence bubbles this time. Two of them are going to be side bubbles. Which, so we're going to have to... <coughs> Do those longer ones. Let's do one of the side bubbles together. Um, give me a pair of sides. Name them for me, not numbers. Names of sides that are going to be similar. Tu and if. Tu and if equals fourteen over forty-four point eight. I'm going to hope that someone's got their calculator at the ready here. Is that come out to the nice decimal or the big, long, nasty one? Oh, that's not too bad. Was that the exact same ratio? Oh, wow, that's crazy. 
That was not intended. The book made this one up. I made that other one. So, yeah. so it's not always going to be 0 0.3125. Yeah, it's kind of weird. That'd be hilarious. Every, every, mm, every single problem. problem. <laughs> All right, so we've taken care of the 14 and the 44.8. Now, it doesn't matter what order we put our bubbles in. The reason is the, the, the shortcut is called SAS, but we don't have to go SAS in our bubbles if we don't want to. Some of my students like doing that, though. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. What are my two angles that are going to match up? Angle U and angle up. So angle U is congruent to angle up. So I've got my side. I've got an angle. Some of my students will mark a little S in their bubble and a little A in their bubble to remind them that they have a set of sides and a set of angles. You don't have to do that, but I think it's it's helpful sometimes. So I got the S and the A. We know we're going to need another S, so we're going to need another one that looks like this. So see if you can write that last side bubble. I'm hoping it comes out to the same decimal. Uh, it has to be this one. Oh, good. And once you've got those three evidence bubbles down, go ahead and make your conclusion bubble and draw your arrows and you're good to go. You might use a different conclusion bubble than I do, but it should match up. <clears throat> I'm going to ask you to add one more thing into your proof when you get it done, but I want to ask you guys to finish up first. I see some of you are still writing, so I'm going to pause a moment. Don't put this away yet because we're going to add one more thing onto this proof. Okay, remember how I said, like in geometry, it's all about telling why something's the right answer, not just finding the right answer, but telling why it's the right answer. Okay, so I'm going to give you a, a sort of a peek into the future. We didn't emphasize this today with the flowchart proofs, but in the future, I am going to ask you to write reasons for each of your bubbles. Right now, I'm just going to write the reason for my final conclusion bubble. My reason here is SAS similarity. And the format that our book uses is they write the reason kind of smaller down below and to the right of the bubble. Okay, so it's kind of in the corner of the bubble, and our reason there is SAS similarity. I'm going to go back up to the last one that we did before this. I'm going to challenge you to write your reason right here next to this conclusion bubble. What do you think you're going to put in this box? With the little yeah, yep, yeah. A A what? A A similarity. Uh, you guys did fantastically. I'm super proud of your attention and your hard work. Um, this is our homework assignment, but it doesn't have the new one on there. Hang on, hang on. Let me get you some problems here. <clears throat> this is section 3.2.1. We actually covered three, two sections today. Let me record this part. That was. <clears throat> 